The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide, toll-free, 800-610-7035. Email is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and our main website, www.exxoneradiotv.com. Exo Nation, it does not matter which news channel you turn on in Canada or the United States. The story is always the same. They're talking about these children, this influx that is that is just impossible to believe. But you know it's the truth. And you watch each and every day. You've got politicians uh, who are getting ready to go away on their summer vacation. Nothing has been done. Uh, you've got a president who, who well, I, I don't know what side of the fence he's sitting on. He's got the Latinos now who are upset with him, and he's got to deal with that crisis because all these children are coming up from Central America. They're trying to get into the United States illegally. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. What will happen? You know, government uh, Governor Terry Branston said Monday that he does not want Iowa to host any of the thousands of children from Central America who have crossed the U.S.-Mexico border alone. During a news conference, Branston said, uh, said he was not aware of any of the children currently living in Iowa, and the state has not yet been contacted by federal government about housing any immigrant children. He said the government's uh, focus should be on securing the borders. And you know what? I agree with the governor fullheartedly. And according to Michelle Obama, we have to keep fighting as hard as we can on immigration. So which way do you go? Do you take the humanitarian way and say, well, they're children. Let's welcome them with open arms. Or do you take the realistic approach and say, hey, they're coming into the country illegally. Well, maybe my guest this hour will be able to help us out. Roger Fleming is the author of a new novel, Majority Rules. He's a veteran of Capitol Hill who witnessed firsthand the failures of the 1986 Reagan-era illegal immigrant amnesty bill. And he's joining us tonight. And, uh, Roger, what do you think should be done? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Great um, pleasure, sir. You know, it's a... It's a complicated problem. Um, one thing I'd like to say at the outset, though, that so many people don't seem to know, is that this has been going on on that border for a long time. Really? Um, since before the 1986 Act. And during the 1986 Act, one of the reasons I wrote this book is um, it's about the majority and minority in, mm -hmm. in some parts, but I use immigration reform as an example. And at the time, 1986, when Congress was debating that law called Comprehensive Immigration Reform, uh, members of the House and Senate were on the floor of both parties saying, look, we've got to do something about the millions of people coming across our border. And at that time, they knew they were only apprehending about one in every four. And, you know, there were about a million coming in a year, close to a million a year. And since 1986, uh, it's continued to happen. So uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's a good thing that the media is focusing on these children. 
Unfortunately, they haven't focused on what's mm-hmm. been happening with so many adults and children coming across for the last 30 years, but it's more of a sensational story now, so they are focusing on it. You know, we, we, we hear that the president is asking Congress for so much money in order to, uh, in my opinion, put his thumb in the dike in order to stop the water from coming in, which I think is a little bit too late. Uh, you've got Congress who, they're getting ready to go on summer vacation. What happens if Congress does go on vacation without the money being allocated as the president requests? Well, you know, I don't think things are going to change a lot down on that border. No, I... Even if you if you appropriate another $3 billion, you, you can get some more judges mm-hmm. down there to try to speed up the administrative process of the children. You can try to put a few more border agents down there, but you've got 2,000 miles of border down there that are essentially, you know, half of which is essentially unarmed and is, is like a sieve. So whether they appropriate the money and try to put some riders on there about trying to sort of um, fix that um, sex trafficking law that was that's part of the problem with the contiguous and non-contiguous mm-hmm. states, um, that would help if they could get that done. I don't know if there's enough courage right now in the House or Senate to do that. There's an election coming up in the fall. But I'm not, you know, I don't think if they don't do it or they do do it, I don't think it's going to change facts on the ground um, immediately one way or the other. You know, if this has been happening since 1986, how come something hasn't been done before now? Yeah, well, if you go back and you look at what happened, so they, there was something called triggered amnesty, and this has been discussed since then. Um, in the 1986 law, mm-hmm. the um, Republicans controlled the Senate then, and they uh, included a provision in the Comprehensive Immigration uh, Bill back then that said it was called triggered amnesty, if, and they said we're not going to allow amnesty to the almost 3 million people here illegally at the time until the border is secured. All right, listen, I hate, I hate to do this, but I've, I've got a commercial break coming up, and I just can't okay. move it. This is an important topic. Roger, thanks very much for joining us. Exo Nation, Roger Fleming is our guest, and uh, we'll tell you where you can get a copy of Majority Rules on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at Elizabeth.Joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, 
and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Exo Nation, Roger Fleming is my special guest this hour. He's the author of Majority Rules. It's available at Amazon.com. And um, what is the what is the general feeling in Washington, Roger, about these children? Do do the lawmakers want to keep the kids on humanitarian basis, or do they just want to do what the law says and send them back? Well, look, I think America is a, a generous country yeah. and has been for many years. We've helped millions of people and will continue to. I think what you, the divide in Washington is some members think, look, we need, we, in order to be able to continue to do this and in the future as well, we need to try and make it, do it legally. And one of the things we have to do in order to do it in an orderly fashion is to secure the border first. If you secure the border first, then you can bring people in legally. If it's the right thing to do to bring these numbers yeah. in. And if we want to raise the legal rates for children or adults um, from any South or Central American countries or any countries in the world, then let's secure the border first and let's have a vote in the Congress on how high we want to raise the legal limits. We want to raise it to 10 million and 20 million. That would be the vote to watch. You sort of have one side of the, you know, the Democrats tend to be more uh, inclined to, to want to pass the citizenship or amnesty. Sure. And Republicans tend to think, you know, the more common sense thing to do is secure the border first and then let's go forward with amnesty and that was part of the debate back in the 80s as well you know what will the effect on the economy be the the employment situation the health care situation the welfare situation if the immigration numbers are increased how will this affect america well in, in truth it's been affecting america for for 20 30 years now um the estimate since the 1986 law was passed is that there have been somewhere between 10 and 20 million people who've come in illegally. So, you know, there's some percentage of those that are, um, you know, benefiting from our social uh, net out there. Um, and if another 100,000 children, frankly, considering the, the numbers out there, probably isn't that big of a, a number compared to the 20 million that are here yeah. over the last many years. Tell me about your book, Majority Rules. It's a, it's a novel. It's about uh, some young people who come to Washington to work for their congressman. Uh, two in particular, one's from Florida, one's from Texas, and they they learn some tough lessons about how the process doesn't work, and they come they stumble upon a uh, conspiracy uh, to smuggle uh, drugs and aliens into the country, um, being run by a committee chairman, powerful and corrupt committee chairman, and they learn some tough lessons about Washington along the way. Um, but the narrative runs in and out of uh, some legislation that took place in the 80s, including drug enforcement. Um, ethics laws and mm -hmm. immigration reform. What have the reviews been on on your book? You know, and like you're, you're 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 at the point where because of your situation in Washington, because of what you've done in the past, how much fiction are you actually implementing in the novel compared to fact? Well, the story is is obviously a fictional yeah. story, but I tried to make it a little bit about things that happened, and, and some of it was my own experience when I got here and saw how the majority party overrules the minority party and how the members of the minority have no rights, and I sort of put some of that angst into the book to try and explain that. But when the story gets close to reality, I've put some, several end notes in the book that explains exactly what happened in committee. Some I have votes, actual votes in committee and on the floor of the House and mm -hmm. speeches that were made to sort of say, okay, here's the fictional account, but in reality, here's what happened. Um, maybe not that year, but the year before, the year after. Um, I've read fiction before and been fr frustrated by stories that seem to be so conclusory about things that never were, were very realistic. So I tried to make, make it a little bit more realistic that way. In, you, in your book, uh, what are some of the topics or the, some of the subjects that you, that you touched? Um, drug enforcement in the 80s was one. Yeah. There was, a, you know, depending on which state you were from in the U.S., if you were from a state like Florida or Texas or 
California, you were interested in drug enforcement. Right.